Hello everyone. Now let's discuss urine report in a pathological state of glomerulonephritis. This is the third clinical case scenario along with the sample will be given to you. A 7 year old girl Pallavi residing at Jalgao was brought to the hospital by parents with chief complaints of swollen hands for the last week. Parents also noticed that over the last two days she was getting swelling around her eyes and abdominal pain. History revealed that three weeks ago she had sore throat streptococcal bacterial infection that had been treated with an antibiotic by her doctor. The laboratory investigation showed elevated levels of serum urea, decreased level of serum protein and albumin. Make a full urine report for the given urine sample. In this urine report format mention all patient information, physical properties and observation and in chemical test you should perform all the tests. Right observation and inference. In this particular case, uh, you may get heat coagulation test, Heller's test, and sulfosalicylic acid test positive, which is indicative of presence of protein in the urine. And benzidine test can also be positive, which is indicative of blood in the urine, that is, uh, presence of blood in the urine. So, the probable diagnosis will be glomerulonephritis. As I have mentioned, the probable diagnosis in this case is acute glomerulonephritis and justification for the same is this condition occurred following the streptococcal infection and glomerulonephritis is common after streptococcal infection. There is swelling around her eyes and abdominal pain is there. Uh, elevated level of serum urea is seen which is indicative of kidney dysfunction. Decreased level of serum protein and serum albumin that is hypoproteinemia and hypoalbuminemia presence of protein in the urine and blood in the urine which is indicated by positive heat coagulation test, Heller's test, sulfosalicylic acid test and positive benzidine test. All these points favor the diagnosis of acute glomerulonephritis. What is the criteria of defining proteinuria? Excretion of less than 150 mg per day of protein and less than 30 mg per day of albumin is normal. Uh, if it is more than that, if total urinary protein is more than 150 mg per day and albumin is more than 30 mg per day, then it is proteinuria. In glomerulonephritis, the proteinuria is always less than 3 g per day, but in nephrotic syndrome, it is more than 3 g per day. 30 to 30 mg per day of albuminuria is called as microalbuminuria. And this microalbuminuria is the early indication of nephropathy in patients of diabetes mellitus and hypertension. The next question is explain the cause of proteinuria. Why there is proteinuria in this condition? And this is due to damage to the glomerular basement membrane following the infection. In this uh, clinical scenario, there was streptococcal infection which leads to the um, damage to glomerular membrane and in the glomerular basement membrane there is collagen, heparin, heparin sulfate and this damage to the membrane leads to lo loss of negative charges on heparin sulfates and that's why albumin starts appearing in, in the urine. Normally what happens at the physiological pH of blood albumin is also negatively charged and due to negative charges of heparin sulfate albumins are repelled and they are not normally excreted but as the charge is lost because of glomerular membrane injury, uh, the uh, albumin starts appearing in the urine and these changes allow the filtration of protein at the glomerulus. What are the different types of proteinuria? There are three important types. The first is glomerular proteinuria. Second is overflow proteinuria and the third is tubular proteinuria. In the first one, there is it is due to glomerular damage. Increase in filter load due to glomerular damage and vascular permeability. The causes are glomerulonephritis, diabetic nephropathy and hypertensive nephropathy. Second is overflow proteinuria. There is increased concentration of protein in blood. And as it is a low molecular weight protein, they start appearing in the urine. For example, in case of hemoglobinuria, myoglobinuria in which myoglobin is excreted in urine in crush injury of muscle. In multiple myeloma, Benz Jones proteins are excreted in the urine. The tubular proteinuria is due to decrease in reabsorptive capacity due to tubular damage. So, in this condition, proteins are excreted in the urine due to tubular damage, which cannot be reabsorbed. Proteins cannot be reabsorbed in the condition. 
and it is due to chronic kidney disease. What are Benz-Jones proteins? In a condition called multiple myeloma, uh, which is also called as plasma cytoma or plasma cell malignancy, there is increased production of light chains of immunoglobulins. And these immunoglobulins, light chains are being smaller molecular weight. They are excreted in urine and they are called as Benz-Jones proteins. Next question is, can you suspect multiple myeloma by doing simple heat coagulation test of urine? The answer is yes. If you take a patient uh, urine sample uh, in which you are suspecting multiple myeloma, so Benz-Jones protein, if they are present in the urine and if you heat the sample at 50 to 60 degrees centigrade, the Benz-Jones protein coagulate and there is formation of turbidity. And on further heat, uh, heating, of the urine sample at around 100 degree centigrade that turbidity disappears and on cooling again it reappears. So by doing this simple test one can suspect multiple myeloma. Explain the biochemical basis of edema in hypoalbuminemia which means less albumin in blood. This can be a cause of excessive proteinuria. According to Starling hypothesis at the arterial end of capillary blood pressure that is also called as hydrostatic pressure which is 35 millimeters of mercury it expels water out from the capillaries and the osmotic pressure which is called as effective osmotic pressure which is contributed by proteins and albumin forms 80 percent of proteins so they are responsible for effective osmotic pressure and it is responsible for taking water into the vascular compartment so at the arterial end of capillary bp is 35 millimeters of mercury and effective osmotic pressure is 25 millimeters so thus water is expelled from vascular compartment at the pressure of 10 millimeters of mercury and at the venous end of capillary blood pressure is 15 millimeters of mercury and effective osmotic pressure is 25 millimeters of mercury so therefore water is imbibed with the pressure of 10 millimeters of mercury on the capillary side thus the water escaping out of arterial side will be exactly equal to those written at the venous side and therefore blood volume remains same if protein concentration in serum is reduced that is hypoalbuminemia the effective osmotic pressure is correspondingly decreased and then the return of water into blood vessel is diminished because more water is expelled from the arterial end and less water is imbibed in the vascular compartment from venous end of capillaries and that is why as more amount of water is going out from the vascular compartment as compared to the getting inside the vascular compartment there is accumulation of fluid is seen in the tissues and this is called as edema and edema is seen in conditions where albumin is level uh, in the blood is less than 2 gram per deciliter what is nephrotic syndrome it is a clinical complex characterized by number of renal and extrarenal features it is characterized by proteinuria more than 3 grams per day, hypoalbuminemia of less than 2 grams per deciliter, edema, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, lipiduria and hypercoagulability. The case of nephrotic syndrome will be discussed in detail later in a separate video.